and gentlemen, here's Frankie Howard. That's a good start, isn't it? I mean, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a difficult set to dress, is it? It's not elaborate scenery. <laughs> Only one stool. You're not, not exactly Sean Kenny. You'd think they get it right, wouldn't you? <laughs> but no, they say it's only in. Sling it on, you'll put it in. It's only in. <laughs> Cheek. That's why they give me cameras. <laughs> you on? Oh, God, good. Put up something. No, you see, I'm to blame. It's my own fault. It's my own fault. I'm. I wasn't firm enough at the outset, that's my trouble. I made a big mistake. I let them know how desperately I needed the money. <laughs> and, uh, you see, no, 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 it's fatal. It's fatal, because once they find that out, you see, you're putty in their hands, you're putty. They treat you like dirt, they do, like dirt. But you try and use some and you're out. <laughs> Mind you, since I was last on, you know, I mean, it's been completely spoiled, hasn't it? By all these intellectuals. All these things they've been saying, oh, it's not shocking. I mean, it's, it's all wrong, isn't it? There's no need for it. I mean, intellectuals shouldn't have to stoop to filth to get laughs, should they? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, whereas I have to, I mean, it's essential. <laughs> I need a nice bit of dirt to get me going. <laughs> well, how are you? It's nice to see you again. Yes, eh? Yes, oh, yes, nicely, thanks, yes. Um, you know, a few aches and pains, but nothing to worry about, because, I mean, you know, when you reach 32, I suppose you have to expect that. You have to expect that sort of thing. <laughs> well, fair wear and tear, my doctor calls it. I think you used to be a second-hand car dealer. <laughs> no, but... Um, yes, oh, it's nerves with me, yes. I, am, I get nervy. Mm. I think you do. I mean, of course, last week I lashed out. You know, I bought myself a bottle of tonic and uh, it didn't much help. It didn't, not, not, not surprising. I was up into the bottle before I found it was for me hair. <laughs> Silly Billy, yes! And of course you'd think using the working for the BBC would um, be a bit of company, but no. Could be a funny lot, you know. But, <laughs> but not friendly, they're not... Um, they are polite and they're correct, but there's no sense of sort of matiness or anything like that. I mean, if you pick up the long glass of bitter and you take a swig, they send it back, you know, they send it back. They don't turn the glass round and drink up the other side like the IPA do or nothing like that. <laughs> Mind you, I mean, little things, but you, you sort of notice them. And, and, and take, take the man who runs this, the man who runs it, you know, the man upstairs. And, um, what's his name, you know, Thing, you know what's his name. And, uh, you see, we don't get on at all. We don't on now. Somebody up there doesn't like me. <laughs> well, I did, you did died, you did died. I got this summons, you see, to appear before him to discuss this series. It was tucked under my windscreen wiper. <laughs> it said, you are instructed to report to TV Centre at uh, sixth floor at 0300 hours. Signed, you know what's his name, Thing. So <laughs> there I was in the corridor outside his office, and I looked up, and there was a red light on over the door. And I thought to myself, hello, that's a bit naughty, you see. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So this, uh, this man was passing. I said, excuse me, I said, what's all this red light business? He said, well, that means you can't go in. So I thought, that's a new twist, isn't it? <laughs> so, that's extra, that must have been it, that bit, never mind. <laughs> no, so, uh, he said, you see, the man's in conference. He said, and you must wait for the green. Wait for the green. And so I stood there, you know, I away, ticking over. And it turned to amber, so I got myself ready. <laughs> then green, and go. And move slowly through the door, turn left to the typist, and into his room. And there he was, pinning on the wall the graph of the TAM ratings. Upside down to make it look better. <laughs> He said, ah, yes, do come in. Do come in, won't you? He said, now tell me, which one are you? I felt like one of the Beverly sisters. <laughs> I said, look, I'm not one of anybody. I said, I'm on my own. Howard F., comedian, BBC for the use of. <laughs> and not very much lately, I might say. <laughs> oh, he said, yes, I remember you, yes. He said, a very disappointing show, yes. <laughs> he said, we must do better than that, mustn't we? He said, tell me, hmm. 
What have you got for us this time? Come on, fill me in. <laughs> I thought nothing would give me greater pleasure. But I controlled myself, and I took a liberty. I sat down. I said, um, well, I've been thinking. I said, I thought I might do more or less the same sort of thing I did before. Oh, he said, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. He said, we can't have that. He said, he said, we must find the right vehicle for you. By the way, he looked at me, I think he meant a hearse. <laughs> oh, yes. He said, you see, he said, um, the trouble with you is, he said, mm, you're so difficult to categorize. He said, uh, he said, you see, you don't fit in anywhere. You're neither one thing nor the other. I don't know what he meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, please, too much tittery, naughty tittermongers here. No, he said, you're a sort of cross between Bert Wooster and Harold Steptoe. He said, you're terribly ill-defined. I said, well, I can't help me looks. Can I? He said, no, no, he said, I don't mean that. He said, you're not with it. You're not 1966. He said, after all, he said, you've got a sort of musty ambience of a bygone age. A sort of mouldy patina of incipient decay. A sort of fossilized... I said, all right, don't go on. I said, I've got the drift. <laughs> no, I mean, I felt like some of the Mortimer Wheeler had dug up. <laughs> Well, he said, that's it in a nutshell. He said, this is a technological age, he said. I can't say it myself. He said, it's a technological age. Well, I've rehearsed it all day. I should be able to say it by now. <laughs> well, if it kills me. This is a technological age, he said. <laughs> he said, you have to modernize, he said. Modernize. He said, oh, get out. Modernize or get out. And with that, he went up his gramophone. He put a Henry Hall record on. <laughs> But he's right. Oh, no, fair dues. You see, you can't keep doing the same old stuff. You can't keep doing it. I mean, you see, a comic these days has to be what's called socially aware. They, they call it responsible. I mean, a comic has to make his audience think as well as laugh. Much if you feel like laughing, for goodness sake, don't stop to think about it. <laughs> no, it's all these political satirists. They're the ones. I mean, people like sort of David Frost and Eleanor, Eleanor Braun and, and uh, what's it on, John Bird. I mean, people are always saying to me, have you seen Bird lately? And I say, no, but I've had it plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a saucy devil, I'm a wag. And, um, <laughs> no, but I'm thinking of dropping, I'm thinking of changing my style. I'm thinking of dropping all this sort of, but not on your nelly and oh, no, ah, this is it, and ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm thinking of dropping a lot of things. <laughs> Mind you, <laughs> the biggest one I've dropped so far is doing this program at all. I'm thinking, <laughs> But I'm thinking of going in myself for this political satire. The only thing is, I don't know much about politics. So I thought to myself, right, I must get in some groundwork. That's the thing. I thought to myself, after all, you see, Chamberlain must go and stop sweet rationing. That's my lot. I'm out of touch, you see. I thought I must go, I'll go to the Commons. That's the hub of it all. So one day, I went down to the Houses of Parliament, or as they call it in the trade, HP. <laughs> the mother of parliaments, the hut of the empire. They ought, to, they ought to hang up a few empty Chianti bottles or a string of onions. I mean, it would make the world of difference, wouldn't it? And it wouldn't cost much. I'd let a wallpaper the place out. Of course, you can get some lovely wallpaper these days, you know. Oh, yes. It looks just like stone. Oh, yes. I'm surprised they haven't done anything, really, I am. Especially with, especially with all these women MPs about. I mean, you'd have thought that Barbara or Bessie would have put a few touches here and there, some nice curtains or something. But still, 
I suppose they don't actually live here, do they? And it's not the same if it's not your own place. Mm. And after all, they never know when they're going to be evicted, do they? <laughs> well, I, could, I think this must I think this must belong to Charlie Claw, you know. And of course he won't do anything, not since the rent act. I said you'll pull it down and put up a few shoe shops or something like that. Excuse me, sir. It's a lie, I never touched her. <laughs> I only offered her a lift, you see, and it was raining, so I lent a class over uh, to close the door. I was not inquiring into your nocturnal habit, sir. Oh, I really endeavoured to carry out my duties as law enforcement officer for this building oh. and protector of the corporate persons of Her Majesty's ministers. What an articulate vote. <laughs> Well, uh, you haven't got to worry about me. I haven't come here to guff anybody up or anything like that. I merely wish to have a quick butchers over the building. I'm sorry, sir, but you can't wander around willy-nilly. I have no intention of wandering around willy-nilly. <laughs> Wherever he may be. <laughs> I merely wish to acquaint myself with the workings of this august assembly. Are you right, I'm afraid, sir. The what? stranger's gallery is full up for today. What do you mean, stranger? I'm no stranger. I'm British. It's still full up. Oh, this is intolerable. Is this what I gained five years of my life fighting for? Stabbing out evil wherever it rears its ugly head? I mean, uh, to ensure a better world to live in for all men, where they can all be equal, regardless of race, creed or colour, merely to be, to be kept out of my own houses of parliament by a gallery full of wogs. <laughs> I'm only doing my job, sir. Oh, here, here, here. Don't you tamper with me, mate. Now, I'm not without influence, you know. Ah. Oh, no, I'm here in an official capacity. On whose authority? Yes. Um, on whose authority? <laughs> uh, ah, yes. Uh, uh, no less a personage than Thing of the BBC, that's true. <laughs> Never heard of him. Never heard of Thing? <laughs> he's, on the, he's on the sixth floor. I mean, you can't get much higher than that. Unless you're mending the roof. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but the BBC have got no authority here. No authority? The BBC? The man mad? This is sheer heresy. Oh, brother, I implore thee, we can't. We can't now. Before they burn you and take away your state. Wait, you say six new welders and one Carlton Green. <laughs> Troublemaker over here. What do you mean a troublemaker? I, I want to just look at him. Yeah. Are you going to leave quietly, sir, or do you require assistance? Hello, the heavy mob's arrived. <laughs> look, your cohort here uh, is trying to impede my rights as a citizen. See? I merely wish to look round, have a look round, and do a bit of ear wigging. Now, is this unreasonable? No, no, that's yeah. not unreasonable. Good, good. But it's not allowed. Unless one has an invitation from one's member of parliament. I haven't got any time for all this bureaucratic fiddle-faddle. I'm a personal friend of my member, and you'll be very upset, you <coughs> know, to feel that you haven't afforded me full cooperation. Uh, would you mind telling me the name of your MP, sir? Yes. Pardon? <laughs> name? Oh, of course he's got a name, naturally. Name? Yeah, ah, ah, yes. Name. Now, uh, well, uh, you, see, uh, you see, Alan has so many friends. Let me see now. Uh, Harold Wilson. Ah, no, no, it's not Harry. No, no, wait a minute. No. Uh, Edward. Uh, Edward. No, no, it's not Teddy. No, no, wait a minute. Oh, isn't this frustrating? It's so silly. Um, it's uh, Enoch. Ah, no, no, it's. Uh, you must know him. He's a funny, little, funny little looking little man with a bald head and a big nose. Ian McLeod. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, Oh, I feel so silly of it, sir. You must know him. Michael Feet. Michael Feet. <laughs> There's more than one of them, you know. The single feet and the two feet. You haven't been here long, have you? Well, hey, it's not one of those them feet. What constituency are you? Uh, hard in some parts, soft in others. <laughs> Don't ask us any questions. I was referring to where you live. Oh, I can't tell you that. Me and the Beatles, we never died out our you know. I mean, the coal man would never get through. Well, where do you live loosely? I'm not telling you. <laughs> you find your own address, is there? <laughs> so what district do you live in? Wallam Green. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, let me see now. Wallam Green, there was a by-election there last week, wasn't there? That's right. Uh, Peak Lab, uh, Blythe Lib, uh, Man Corner. That's him, the con man. That's him now. <laughs> I inform him that I await his pleasure. 
I'll leave it up to you, Harry. I've got work to do. If you need any help, shout. I'll go and see if he's in the house, sir. If you wouldn't mind waiting here. Not at all. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Buffoon. <laughs> it's all the fault of Guy Fawkes, all these precautions. We was a silly man. He spoiled it for the rest of us. <laughs> the best thing would be to put all this on television and we could all see it. But they won't have that all, no. It would mean that some of them would have to turn up occasionally. <laughs> All gone. What's the time? Oh, look. Five pounds, something or other. <laughs> I must get that little hand put on tomorrow. <laughs> Where's... Where's the fool gone? Oh, I'm not standing here waiting for him. I'll take a look round myself. Don't let on if he comes back, don't see. this is. No name. Hello, what's this? Second class off peak return. Let's be key to Victoria. It's Teddy! <laughs> yes! He, he lead her match up. Ooh. Top secret. But hang on a minute. <laughs> Why not? Well, it's treason. Only if you tell. Well, I wouldn't tell. Or I'd have a look. Thank you, I will. <laughs> Top secret. <laughs> Sandy McPherson's book of popular organ music. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's all here. It's been a hard day's night. Hand and feet movements. This is political dynamite. No wonder there's a split in the party. Well, I know for a fact that half of them are original Dixon fans. Oh, yes. That's why they that's why they have the conference at Blackpool, you know. Oh, yes. I mean Alex never had the tower ballroom. Oh, I do like to be the fact. Yes, knows all the words. Yeah. Oh, Teddy shouldn't leave things like this lying about. It's ridiculous. Hello. Oh. There's a note here from the Prime Minister. Dear Ted, expect you round at half past eight. Don't be late. Mary's making a toad in the hole. <laughs> oh, isn't that succulent? <laughs> oh, no, don't laugh. No, it's very nice of them. After, I mean, they, they know he lives on his own. You see, and it's nice to go around there of an evening. It's a bit of company for him. <laughs> Matter of fact, I hear that Mary washes his shirts. <laughs> don't say no. Don't make trouble. Hello, hello. Canteen estimates for 1966. 2,600 pounds for batter pudding. <laughs> no wonder they have all night sittings. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, yes, do come in, do come in. Are you waiting to see the leader? Well, I thought I'd, well, I'm, I ought to have a chat before I went in. <laughs> I don't believe we've met. No, I don't know how are Where are you from? Uh, yeah, Wallen Green. Oh, yes, of course. There was a by-election there last week. That's right, yes. I am pleased to meet you. Oh, that is civil of you. <laughs> Reginald Smythe Barclay, East Twickenham. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Welcome to the house. Oh, you're very kind. I hear you had a bit of trouble getting in. Oh, shocking. Shocking. Two right big heads, I'm telling you. They were very rude. Yes, well, things can get a bit dirty sometimes. Can you? Of course, a lot depends on one's agent. Yes. Have you got a good agent? Oh, terrible. and Terrible agent. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm thinking of packing him in, you know. Well, the last time he did anything, the last thing he did for me was about a year ago, a week at Accrington. Oh, you fought Accrington? Pardon? Fought Accrington? <laughs> oh, I, most of the week I did. There were shocking audiences. You know. <laughs> yes. Who was up against you? Ah, yeah, you may well ask. Very strong opposition. Frank Highfield, you see. Highfield. <laughs> oh, he's independent, isn't he? Well, he should be by now. He must have earned a few, Bob. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm glad you got in. Oh, thank you now, so look, much. Now, look, the debate is about to start, so we'd better go to the chamber. Yes. <laughs> we 
better go to the chamber. Oh, the chamber, oh! I thought it was full up. <laughs> There's a plenty of room. Oh, how many of Now, look, don't worry. You ah, just stick with me and I'll not. show you the rest. Oh, it's very kind. No, no, no. I know what it's like the first time. Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> now, if there's anything you don't understand, don't hesitate to ask. It's very civil, most kind. Not at all. Not at all. Follow me. Not at all. <laughs> What a personable young politician. Lovely for you, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely upstairs in the pictures, isn't it? Are you sure it's all right me being here? Yes, of course it is. That's ah. what we're here for. Oh. Now look, here's the order paper for the first city. Oh look, I'll just have the suit, the soup and the meat course. <laughs> because, no, I'm trying to you lose a few. No, it's pounds. the order in which the day's business is going to be taken. I beg your pardon. Yes. Yes. Oh, now I can think of it. Um, would anyone care for a licorice all sorts? <laughs> Ah, the PM's just arrived. Ooh. We'll be starting now. Yes. Excuse me, who's that lad there with the grey wig? The, uh, that's it. That's the speaker. Oh. He doesn't say much, does he? <laughs> well, when you want to speak, you have to attract his attention and then he'll call them. Oh, I, Roger, Roger. <laughs> Mr. Bryant, don't you think? <laughs> I would like to bring to the attention of this house, and in particular to the minister concerned, the very grave situation facing the fishing fleets of Grimsby, Hull, and Yarmouth, which, as you are no doubt aware, are fishing ports on the coast. <laughs> He's done his homework. Is that... <laughs> the crisis which has developed is a serious one, namely the non-appearance of the herring show. Say, 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 say. Damn shame, yes. <laughs> carry on, do carry on. The fishing fleets of drifters and trawlers, the longshoremen and the wholesalers, are facing financial ruin due to the government's avowed policy of buying Russian fish rather than in preference to helping financially to equip our fleet with the same modern detecting devices <laughs> as are employed by the Russian trawlers. Doesn't he go on? <laughs> it gets turgid, doesn't it? My friend is a gas shortage. <laughs> uh, yes, well, my question is this. <laughs> I thought he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Can the government assure this house that the policy of buying Russian herrings will not continue indefinitely? Thank you. Isn't this exciting? It's better than the power game, isn't it? Answer, answer. Yes, answer. Yes, if you dare. Answer. Yes. He's on our side. Oh, did they take sides? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yes. Ask me. Mr. Corey for the Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, once again the right honourable member has succeeded in bringing red herrings into his argument. <laughs> <laughs> God lying. <laughs> they stole him in that, Quinton. <laughs> the government has no intention of pouring public money into an industry well able to provide its equipment for itself. If, however, Mr. Bryanson is inviting the government to nationalize the fishing industry, uh, I think he will do very well to pump his party leaders uh, to their feelings. Mr. Wing, George, George. Uh, <laughs> over here, please. What? Can I ask a question? I take it you're new here. Yes, first time, yes. yes. But in future, if you wish to attract the speaker's attention, just wave your order paper. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Yes. Ooh! Over here. <laughs> um, uh, right on the gentleman from... Warren Green. Carry on. Yes. Tough. Now, gentlemen, <coughs> my question is this. Has anybody seen a bag of licorice oil? <laughs> now, I passed this bag around some five minutes ago, and from thence I have not seen them. <laughs> and I have come to the reluctant conclusion that there are, among, there are amongst us some right gannets. <laughs>
<laughs> now, that question is out of order. And if anyone's whooped all my licorice also, it will be out of order. <laughs> Down, fool. What are you trying to do? I'm only asking for the return of my property, that's all. Ha, <laughs> ha. Go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oi, 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 mate, oi. I, oh, if you mind, Alec, one at a time, mate. <laughs> I mean, when one singer, one song, a common as muck song, aren't they? <laughs> now, where was we? Ah, yes, licorice also. Uh, uh, I, I put it to you, and you can put it where you like. <laughs> but my friend, this rashness, <laughs> this in... One moment, please. Day. One moment, please. What? Boys, boys, rangers. Who? <laughs> You're an imposter, sir. How dare you? You are not the member of parliament for Wallen Green. I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. I, I, yes, and I voted for you. And I'm sorry I did now. Turning up late the first day, I should be ashamed of myself. The left of the herrings bit all over again. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean out of it? What do you mean out of it? I'm not going to... Don't you push me, Mush. Now, come on, don't make me use Mush. I want my own touch your mouth, you. Mind your feet, then. I shall write to my MP about this. I'm telling you. I'll come back. Oh, yeah. Come on, After all, it wasn't Quinton's fault, was it? It was pure peak, that's all. Pure peak. I've never had a bigger peak in all my life. But the thing was, I wanted to find out about politics, and by heavens, I was going to. Because I'm resolute, you know. I'm not easily swayed. Once I've charted a course, my rudder stays rigid. <laughs> so next morning, I went back again. Yes, cheeky devil. But this time, of course, I went in a different entrance, a different entrance. I thought to myself now, I won't get into any trouble, I just wander around, make a few notes, and back home again. Come along, old boy, mustn't be late for the debate. Hurry up, Boofy. All right, all right. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> Please don't keep calling me Boofy, I'm not the Earl of Aaron. What do you say, Boofy? Speak up. Look, it's not, I'm not Boofy. Yes, saw you on the Eamon Andrews show, very good. I know I was on the Eamon Andrews show, <laughs> but oh, what's the point? There's no use, he won't be told, he can't hear a thing. You see, I met him upstairs in the bar, and he dragged me down there, made me dress up, and we're off. Third wheel of the Rentac. Come on, Boofy. Come on, Boofy. All right. <laughs> Morning, Salisbury. <laughs> I don't see you here very often, Boofy. You won't see me much in future either. I only come here myself because of the five or a day attendance money. Yes, well, it... How much? <laughs> <laughs> Well, come on, let's get clocked in. <laughs> Do you ever see anything of old Newcastle? Well, only when they play old Chelsea. <laughs> and you, his sister, you know, charming girl. Yes. You're taller than I remember, you boofy. Well, much taller. Taller altogether, boofy. Yes, chilly, yes. <laughs> What's a funny man? <laughs> Still, a fiver a day, not every sneeze that is it. It's more than I get from the BBC. Lord, would you care for liquid sauce? <laughs> 